The Kansas City Chiefs finished the 2023 season with an 11-6 record and won the Super Bowl for the third time in five years. Despite winning the Super Bowl, it was anything but a swift ride throughout the regular season. Yes, they started out 7-2 through 9 games, but there was a point in the year where the Chiefs looked like anything but future Super Bowl champions, and the low light was during a home Christmas Day loss to the Raiders, in which they lost 20-14, and Patrick Mahomes threw a pick 6 to put the Chiefs down double digits. But as we know, the Chiefs would overcome the adversity and for the first time in the Patrick Mahomes era, Kansas City would have to go on the road to win not just one, but multiple playoff games just to get the chance to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And with wins over Josh Allen and the Bills and Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, Kansas City eventually beat the 49ers after being down double digits in the first half of Super Bowl 58. It was a very up and down year for the Chiefs last year, and what I think is particularly frightening for the rest of the AFC is, 2023 was in a lot of ways a down year for the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes threw by far the fewest amount of touchdowns in a full season, excluding 2019 in which he missed a few games, and he also had a career high in interceptions. And this team finished 15th in offensive points per game last year, and still won the Super Bowl, and got better this offseason. And make no mistake about it, the NFL runs through Kansas City. But can they do what no other team has done in the history of the NFL? Can they three-peat? Well, we're going to break it down in today's video. Now let's begin. And we are starting today's video by breaking down who the Chiefs lost in free agency and who they brought in. And with this team being clear Super Bowl contenders, and with most of the roster already being taken care of, it should not come as a surprise that the Chiefs didn't spend all that much in free agency. They have three players alone with a cap hit north of $24 million this year, and they are Patrick Mahomes, who has a hit of $37 million, guard Joe Tooney with a cap hit of $26.9 million, and right tackle Jawan Taylor with a cap hit of $24.7 million. Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones are a little further down the list, but the point is, this team focused more on retaining players than going out and spending big money on free agents, and this is all per Smotrack.com. Their biggest signing was bringing back pass rusher Mike Dana, and obviously when you think of the Chiefs, there's several players you think of right away, but Dana has been a very good contributor for Kansas City since being a fifth round pick back in 2020, and he has gradually gotten better over the years. He finished the 2023 season with a career high in pressures and sacks, and bringing him back at just $8 million per year while being a solid starter was a great move by the Chiefs. They also brought in Marquise Brown from the Cardinals, and the Chiefs only had two players have 500 or more receiving yards last year, which of course was Travis Kelsey and a rookie Rishi Rice. And while I don't think, nor anyone for that matter, thinks Hollywood is an elite true number one receiver, he is an upgrade from what they previously had, and they only signed him to a one-year deal, so there is very, very little risk here with the Hollywood signing. They also brought in Carson Wentz in a backup role to be clear, as I don't think he's going to be competing for a starting job, and tight end Irv Smith. That was it for the Chiefs, and naturally when you are contending for not just a year or two, but for several years, you're going to have talent taken from your roster. It's how every cycle goes in today's era, and we saw that with Tyreek Hill a few offseasons ago, but we also saw that this past offseason when the Chiefs sent corner Legereus Need to the Titans for a 2025 third round pick. In terms of free agency, the Chiefs didn't have many true big losses, but losing Legereus Sneed was a big loss from the 2023 season to the 2024 season. They lost veteran guard Nick Allegretti to the Commanders, punter Tommy Townsend to the Texans, and linebacker Willie Gay Jr., who quietly started 47 games for this team over the past few years. That's the one big thing to remember with a team contending like this, is you're going to keep most of the true big name players, and Kansas City has in Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Chris Jones, while having to draft good players on rookie scale contracts, which Casey was able to through the Tyree kill trade for example. Overall, it wasn't the busiest offseason for the Chiefs in terms of player additions and subtractions, but it didn't need to be because of how good this roster already was. 
Now, for the Kansas City Chiefs defense, this is going to be one of the best defenses in all of football. They are, of course, led by the five-time All-Pro defensive tackle Chris Jones. Not only is Chris Jones now arguably the best defensive tackle in all of football, but there are several great players on this defense. Trent McDuffie is a studded corner, and he was a first-team All-Pro last year. I also think George Karloftis is one of the more underappreciated players in all of football, and when you're on a team like this, it's easy to go unnoticed or to simply be looked over. But this team has good players at all three levels of the defense, whether it be Jones, linebackers Nick Bolton and Leo Chanel, who I think takes a big step this year, or, of course, Trent McDuffie. There's not a lot of weaknesses on this roster, and especially not the defense. Obviously, the Ravens had a great defense last year and will again in 2024 too, but Kansas City's defense was very good and they finished second in points allowed per game, averaging just 17.3 allowed per game. It doesn't always equate exactly like this, but the Chiefs also allowed the second fewest yards out of any defense last year, and even despite the loss of Legereus Sneed, I still think this defense is going to be great this year for a few reasons. Well, aside from the players, of course. This team allowed 400 yards of opposing offense in a grand total of zero games last year. Whether it was the regular season or the postseason, nobody had 400 yards on this defense, and as we know, the Chiefs played everybody. Whether it was the Lions in the season opener, or the Bills twice, or the Packers as they were starting to heat up, or the Ravens and Niners in a span of three weeks, nobody had 400 yards on the Chiefs' defense. And a quick side note, I do think defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo is underrated in the all-time discussion for defensive coordinators, as he is now a four-time Super Bowl champion, but one thing that I don't think will happen again for the Chiefs that unfortunately happened last year was a brutal eight-game stretch where they looked bad offensively and in turn set up the defense to not fail per se but certainly not succeed and from the week 8 game against the Broncos through the Christmas Day game against the Raiders Kansas City turned the ball over 15 times in a span of eight games with five alone coming against the Broncos the Chiefs defense on the other hand only forced five turnovers in these eight games and the Chiefs went just three and five with a minus 10 turnover margin during this span Miraculously, the Chiefs never allowed more than 30 points in any of these games, and they actually had a minus 11 turnover margin on the year. And whether it was a ball off Kadarius Tony's hands in the Brian Branches for a pick six in week one, or an MVS drop against the Eagles in the fourth quarter on Monday night, the Chiefs nearly won a lot of these games where they had irregular things happen to them. I know every team has drops, but truly, how often does a player tip a pass directly to a defender that goes for a pick six in a game you lose by a single point? And that's kind of what I'm saying. Is the Chiefs' 2023 regular season at times was bad, and why I am so high on the Chiefs entering the 2024 season, I mean aside from the obvious, is all of these things happened last year and they still won the Super Bowl. And the Chiefs' defense last year, even for as good as it was, only forced 17 turnovers over the course of the regular season, which ranked 27th in the NFL. Now, I don't expect it to be all sunshine and rainbows for the Chiefs this year, and I do have some concern at the corner position outside of McDuffie. 2022 fourth round pick Joshua Williams is stepping up this year at the second outside corner position, and 2023 fourth rounder Chamari Connor is stepping up at nickel. After those guys, the Chiefs' corners are guys like Jalen Watson, Nazee Johnson, and Keith Taylor Jr., and that's my one true concern with the Chiefs' defense this year. I think they have really good pass rushing depth, and I think their linebacking unit is one of the best in football. I also like Justin Reed and Brian Cook at safety, and I really like Brian Cook, and I would be pretty surprised if this defense finishes outside of the top seven in points allowed this year. The Chiefs defense deserves as much credit as the offense receives in regards to their third Super Bowl, maybe even more, because without this unit led by Spags, I don't think this team would have got past Baltimore in the AFC Championship game. They're a very, very good and very well-coached unit. For the 2024 Chiefs offense, this is a unit I am very much looking forward to watch play this year, and it has more than just to do with Patrick Mahomes. The 2023 Chiefs offense at times was 
well, bad, especially the weeks 8 through 16. It, that was a tough stretch for Kansas City. But what has to be remembered, and why I am so high on the Chiefs entering 2024, again, aside from the obvious, is this team still won the Super Bowl despite having countless reasons to either throw in the towel or to simply, again, not win the Super Bowl last year. I mean, how many times do you have a player tip a ball directly into a DB's hands that goes the other way for six points, in a game you lose by one, which again altered them getting the number one seed, and then you have a, that same player line up offsides in a game they very easily could have won, and two plays alone at very critical moments in the game has this team go from 13 wins, which they could have had, to 11 wins. And then there was another play during the Eagles game where the Chiefs receiver dropped a pass late, and we're talking about three critical plays where I think if the Chiefs have even league average play at the position, they win 14 games last year with an offense that, again, was not good at times. And the biggest thing with the additions of Marquise Brown and Xavier Worthy, I mean, aside from them both being speedsters, is they're going to be an upgrade. They're obviously not a, well, Tyreek Hill or a Justin Jefferson at, at the position, but they're serviceable, and that, that's all the Chiefs need. Now, when you have an offensive line as loaded as the Chiefs do, with Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, who I think is honestly one of the most underappreciated players in football, and even the same can be said for the man that plays directly next to him and right guard Trey Smith, and then of course Juwan Taylor, combined with a, a power back or a guy that really, you know, wants to, you know, go through you every single play in Isaiah Pacheco, this is going to be a, a complete pain in the rear end to play for opposing defenses because with the additions of Marquise Brown and Xavier Worthy combined with a Hall of Fame tight end and Hall of Fame quarterback uh, it, within the same offense, they're going to run a lot of 11 personnel, which is one running back, one tight end, and three receivers. And just by the sheer threat of Xavier Worthy, who everyone knows ran the fastest 40 in NFL history, you're going to have to play this team different because they, they can stretch the field vertically at any play. So when you have the threat of both Xavier and Marquise, who by the way was a sub 435 40 guy himself, that's going to open up a lot of plays underneath for Travis Kelsey. That's going to open up the run game for Isaiah Pacheco. And I don't expect Mahomes to ever be a 5,050 touchdown guy again. I think that was just a, a very rare year in itself. But, and even with the 17th game, I, I don't expect that. But it's not unreasonable to think that Patrick can throw for 46, 47, 4,800 yards, throw for 35, 36 touchdowns, and limit the interceptions this year. Because, again, a couple of his interceptions last year, and this also applies to Josh Allen for that matter too, but a couple of his interceptions last year out of the 14 were not on him. And I don't know how you can be anything but excited for this offense entering this year. I mean, they have two big field stretchers with Marquise and Xavier. They also have a really solid receiver in Rasheed Rice who can play underneath and in the intermediate part of the game and of course have a Hall of Fame tight end. So this team still finished in the upper half of points per game last year as they finished 15th. Granted, it was just in the upper half, but they're going to be one of the best offenses in the league this year. I truly believe that. And... When you factor in a great offensive line with the field stretchers, with the ground game, with a good defense, good luck stopping this team. They are they're one of the best teams in the NFL for countless reasons, and good luck. You're going to need it trying to beat this team this year. All right, we now welcome on a very special guest to the channel. It is Cole from How About Those Chiefs. Cole, how we doing? Doing great, man. Thanks so much for having me. Football is so close, so... I'm excited. Chiefs training, camp, Chiefs training camp just ended yesterday. Um, they got their second preseason game Saturday, which will be dropping next week. So be curious to see how that pans out. But super excited, man. Uh, the first regular season games like less than three weeks away. Absolutely. And uh, as not just defending champions, but back to back defending champions, you guys, of course, open Crazy. up the game on, on Thursday against the Ravens. But uh, the first question here, this is a. Uh, Pretty, pretty standard outside of, of Patrick Mahomes. What player are you most looking forward to seeing this year? Yeah, so I, I tried not to to hit any of the cornerstone pieces. So no Kelsey, no Chris Jones. I actually, I listed a couple that just kind of are, I'm keeping tabs on for offense and defense. 
Um, but I will, I'll save two offensive ones for the rookies because I know we have a question uh, down the road here. But I'm, I'm really intrigued to see running back Isaiah Pacheco this year. Um, he's been working with a running or with a wide receiver coach rather all offseason long with the goal of becoming an every down back if needs be. And he's slimmed down a little bit. He's also had a fully healthy offseason. Last year, he had two surgeries after the Super Bowl. Um, that kind of, I think, stunted his progression just in the offseason, at least. So I'm, I'm super excited for Pacheco. Also, they're like we, we'll talk about it later, too. But there's some question marks in the running back room that I just have right now. And um, I think having Pacheco and the ability to be even more of a threat in the passing game Runs a 4-3, something 40 is super fast. Um, very intrigued to see him on the offensive side of the ball. For defense, I mean, there's a few. I'm very excited, though, for George Karloftis entering year three. Um, he is the first non-Chris Jones defender since D Ford to have over 10 sacks in a season. And that was like a record that stood since 2018. So very excited for George entering year three. Absolutely. I am, <clears throat> excuse me, I am too. And I, I love George Karloftis. Now you mentioned something we would break down later and you mentioned a, a slight concern with, with Pacheco and, and potentially the run game. So outside of, of that, what are, what are your biggest concerns with the 2024 Chiefs? Because there's, there's not a lot to be concerned about. Yeah. Overall, I think the roster is looking pretty good. I think if you had to compare how the defense and the offense might end up at the end of the year. You know, maybe the Chiefs don't have a top two defense this year like they did last year, but I still would be pretty confident it's around that top five, top seven. Um, I think Snead, losing Snead hurts a little bit more than some will say. That cornerback two spot right now, there's nobody's really locked it up outside of, you know, Trent McDuffie is going to be CB1, but there's still Joshua Williams, Jalen Watson fighting for a cornerback two spot. Nazi Johnson, he could maybe work in there um, as he is bouncing back from having a torn ACL last training camp. Um, so I think the cornerback spot is one that I am a little bit concerned about. Just if you're looking like position group by position group, uh, having Sneed now gone does hurt. Um, defensive end room, it's a little thin outside of basically Mike Dana and George Karloftis are your main two. And then Aminahue is going to come back after the bye week. So the question is, do the Chiefs just kind of hold out uh, with that defensive in-depth, knowing that maybe Felix Anudike Uzama hopefully takes a step up in year two and they kind of just wait for a minute Hughes return. Um, so defensive in-depth there and then the running back room. I think with Clyde edwards Lair, he's dealing with a couple things, a bunch of uh, PTSD flare-ups. An event happened when he was in LSU that a lot of people might know about that I think got kind of brought back up when the... Super Bowl parade shooting happened and he's been dealing with PTSD flare-ups and a sickness called cyclic vomiting syndrome that has him in the hospital and he needs like IVs and stuff. And so he missed all last week of training camp. He's missed probably half of training camp due to illness. So he was like RB2 to me, like the, the trusty vet, you know what you have in him entering year five. Uh, but right now, I don't know if you can count on him for 17 games. I don't even know how reliable he's going to be this season. And I'm trying to tread carefully there and be respectful because I know it's like mental health stuff he's dealing with and a right. sickness that's out of his control. But outside of that, when you think about Pacheco's violent running style, you've got Daenerik Prince, who we're hoping makes a, a year two leap and is able to make the 53-man roster. Carson Steele is another guy running back, fullback, hybrid that could make the roster. But outside of... Outside of Pacheco, I mean, it's a little bit of question marks, potential what ifs for Daenerik Prince and Carson Steele, and then a question mark on the health of Clyde Edwards Elaire. Yeah, so I got to be honest, Cole, I had no idea all of these these personal things Clyde was going through. I mean, we're, of course, you know, as much as you can, hoping the best for him and, and, and wishing that everything turns out, you know, well. But um, that's definitely something you're not going to be able to measure, something you're it's there's there's no timetable there's there's nothing so that's definitely something pertaining to the Chiefs 2024 team preview that's that's gonna have to be monitored throughout the year now bouncing off of that I noticed you didn't mention left tackle are you okay with where the Chiefs are at the left tackle position yeah that's actually one of the rookies that I'm looking forward to most and kind of have my eye on um I know that's a, a question for later but Kingsley Suamatsu so far 
has been fine and the Chiefs have kind of gotten away with serviceable left tackles over the last couple of years. That's no even real disrespect to uh, Orlando Brown Jr., who is now with the Bengals. I felt like he played pretty decent, but Donovan Smith was fine too. Uh, he dealt with some injuries. Wanye Morris stepped in last year. Um, and I think Kingsley right now is a step up from Wanye. I guess you could label it as a concern. I just think as long as the O-line stays pretty healthy, particularly the interior trio and Joe Tooney is there, recovered from that pec injury he sustained in the AFC Championship game. If he's there and right next to Kingsley, I do feel pretty good about it. And also Patrick Mahomes has a literal uh, like spidey sense in the pocket um, to pressure. So I, I think it's a slight concern, but at least at this point in time, I'm more intrigued, I think, than anything else. So going off of that with pass rush being not just an emphasis for Kansas City, but for every team, who do you think is the biggest threat this year to the 2024 Chiefs? Sure. I, I listed a few teams. I think Ravens and Bengals are right up there, especially if Burrow can stay healthy. Um, I mean, the Ravens were, were right in it. And then Bills and Texans, I, I put them on that list as well. Uh, you can never count out Josh Allen. I understand they've lost some key players and then even just recently lost Milano for maybe the season, tore his bicep. Um, so some tough, some tough things going on for the Bills, but you can't count out Josh Allen, CJ Stroud and company. I'll be curious to see what that looks like as he steps into year two. They've got a year of film on him, but those are four teams that I, when I look at the AFC, you know, those are going to be tough games in the regular season. And then we'll probably see most of those teams in the playoffs as well. So in week two, if the Bengals win, are you prepared for uh, the war that's going to be going on online with, with Burrowhead? And are you, are you prepared for that if Cincinnati goes into Arrowhead and wins? Yeah, I th so Mahomes has lost three games to Burrow and three to Allen. Thankfully, he hasn't lost to Allen in the postseason. He did lose, uh, what, one time to Burrow in he the, did in once, the playoffs. Yep. We're, I'm just at the point now, and I don't want to sound like, oh, some hockey <laughs> Chiefs fan, but I'm just at the point now where the regular season, like, I am kind of, we're bothered, but not that bothered, because we pretty much know the Chiefs are going to make it to the playoffs, and then all bets are off <laughs> once the playoffs come. I mean, they've, they're they the most winning organization since 2017. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm prepared for the Bengals fans in the mentions and stuff like that, but I, at the end of the day, all they can cling to is a Super Bowl loss and regular season <laughs> wins against the Kansas City Chiefs. They're one and one in the playoffs, so that's what I kind of what I kind of go to when I think about the Bengals. Okay, well, um, now I do want to to go to an entirely different topic. Obviously, still within the Chiefs, but I am yep. curious. There are, I would say, four decent, and of course, there's at least one that's that's great, but at least four decent options for Mahomes this year. Where, how do you think the Chiefs receiving yards rank at the end of the season? Yeah, last year they were still, what, fifth or sixth? They were just out of the top five, sixth last year, which actually I looked this up before the interview and was kind of surprised. I was like, God, they were still sixth in receiving yards. So they're definitely top five, easily top three this year. In my opinion, they have upgraded. And some of it's like hinging on Xavier Worthy in his rookie year. But Hollywood is a better overall receiver as long as he holds up health wise. He'll be back week two, week three, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, shedding MVS was good. He regressed more than I thought he would have. Um, I thought he would actually take a step up last year, and he definitely took a step back. Tony and Sky, I don't even know if Tony's going to make the roster. Sky might be wide receiver five or six. Not seeing a ton of snaps, but we'll see. Um, but when you've got the combo of Rice, who may not even get suspended this year at all, Hollywood and Worthy. I do like that combined with Travis Kelsey and think that it's going to be a really good year for the Chiefs in the passing game. So if you had to rank like like Kelsey one, Rice two, you mm. know, Worthy, how, how, would, how, would you, how would you rank those? Is, is Kelsey still, still the top guy? Yeah, I think he probably finishes 1,000 yards again or right near. Last year he was just short and he dealt with the hyperextended knee early. And then I can't remember what week, week five-ish, um, the ankle sprain. I think it was against uh, the Packers. But um, that was still almost a thousand yard season for him. And he sat out week the last week of the regular season. Um, so yeah, I think Kelsey's still at the top. But then in theory, this was before the Hollywood Brown stuff happened. But I had Hollywood next. Mm -hmm. And then probably Rice and Worthy working in there. 
right after. So off of, I mean, Xavier Worthy, obviously everyone knows about the 40, but he's he's yeah. way more than just a 40. He's a very, very good football player. Which rookies are you most looking forward to watching and why? Yeah, I actually put, I mean, I could talk about all of them and I think they're, they're interesting to me because I just am a nerdy lifelong Chiefs fan, but I am really intrigued to see Worthy in year one. The reason for that is the wide receiver coach, Connor Embry, just spoke at a presser this past week and he said they are going to be leaning more heavily on Worthy at the beginning of his rookie year uh, compared to how they leaned on Rice. They didn't really ease Rice. They eased him in. And then about week five, week six last year, Rice, that's when you started seeing his stats steadily go up. I don't even know if that was the intention with Rice. I think just everybody else was disappointing and, and Rice was starting to answer the call. Um, so I do think Worthy from the jump is going to be leaned on a bit more Again, I think and hope that he's going to be more capable his rookie year than MVS was last year. He's even more dangerous than MVS, I think, in a few different ways, including his ability to track the deep ball, which I'm excited about. Um, so worthy for sure. And then I do have Kingsley Suamataia on there. We really do need uh, a, a guy that can just play decent for Patrick Mahomes on the blind side there. Having Joe Tooney helps, um, but we're kind of riding on a little bit of a what-if factor with the Chiefs' second-round pick and Kingsley. Wanye Morris is in the mix, but he has clearly lost the battle so far. I, I guess you couldn't rule out bringing in a vet and Donovan Smith for, for the left tackle spot, but I feel like they would have done that by now if they were going to, and Kingsley's kind of going to be the guy. So I, both of them are kind of on the offensive side of the ball, but those are two that I'm most intrigued to watch this season. I couldn't agree more, and... I think what's what's kind of lost within you know the Tom and Jerry play call to win the Super Bowl and 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 Jet Trips or Jet Ship Wasp and and, and all of the, the the play names that Andy Reid has is I think some people either forget or, or may not realize that he's an offensive line coach first and foremost. So I am eager to see the development of Kingsley Suamaitia in in his rookie year. Now, one question I have kind of kind of following off this, although it could apply to second and even third year players, who is your going to be your breakout player for? the 2024 Chiefs. Mine personally is linebacker Leo Chanel. I absolutely loved Leo a couple of years ago in the draft process. I thought he did everything right. And I really didn't think there were many flaws in his game. And I think we've seen that so far. And he is, to me, just an all around great linebacker. And he's he kind of has a bit of a throwback play style, but he's still fast enough to play in the modern game. So he's kind of like a, a fast thumper, if you will, at the linebacker position. So I'm curious to hear who your breakout player is. Yeah, I talked about him a little bit earlier. I still am pretty high on George Karloftis. I think he's going to have an even better year three. And that's great news, in my opinion. If you're going to have to deal with somebody like Chris Jones and you have to then really be worried about somebody like Carl Loftus. I would love for FAU to have a breakout year. I am not extremely confident at this point in time that that would happen. That's the Chiefs first round pick from last year that basically redshirted last year. And I still don't know what to make of him. He's looking better in year two, but uh, I think Carl Loftus on the defensive side of the ball is primed for a breakout year, even though you could argue he had one last year. I think it's going to be even better though this year. I couldn't agree more. I love George and uh, Cole had me on his channel a couple weeks ago. We talked about we talked about George Karloftis and and he's I, I love his game. He is such a, he's such a good player. Uh, but now we have quick question. This is just going to be a couple rapid fires. You ready? Yep. All right. Do the Chiefs go six and zero in division play? This this could get contentious. I said no. Uh, I just think it's so hard to win twice against even teams that are struggling. The Raiders, the Broncos, the Chargers are intriguing to me this year, but the Chiefs went, <laughs> they lost to the Broncos and Raiders last year. Uh, you could argue they beat themselves in those games, but I think they probably go something like five and one, maybe four and two, worst case scenario. I'd love six and oh, I think they did it two years ago, maybe. But those were not easy wins. They were, some of them were down to the wire. Um, so I'm going to say like five and one, maybe four and two, but they're going to win majority of those games and win the West. I could not agree more with the West and, and that, that Christmas Day game, I would imagine that 
put him at nine and six. That was the, the low point of the year. Um, I, now I'd imagine oh, the man. end result. The end result was probably worth it. I I would know as a Vikings fan, but uh, I would imagine the end result had to have been worth it. But uh, the next question over under Patrick Mahomes passing touchdowns 34 and a half. Yeah. So I pulled up his career stats and 2020, he had 38, 2021, 37, 2022, 41. And then in 2023, he still managed 27 with the worst receiver room I've ever seen in Kansas city in a long time. And the worst drops, uh, drop percentage in the NFL, I would go higher. I, I think, I think he'll hit over 34. He's done that three of the last four years. And uh, I would personally bet on the higher. I, I I would agree. I can't imagine that the, the numbers are lower considering they improved in a big way. And I mean, they went from kind of what was like almost a net negative with MVS and, and, and Tony and everybody else to bringing in Xavier Worthy and Hollywood and Rasheed Rice in his second year. And of course, well, Travis Kelsey. And speaking of Travis Kelsey, his personal touchdowns, he only had five last year. So over yeah. under for Kelsey this year over under nine and a half receiving touchdowns yeah i kind of go back to week one like two days before that game he hyperextended his knee didn't play he really wasn't right and then when he sprained his ankle like everybody's like oh did kelsey lose a step he's getting old but he rested week 18 and he went on a heater in the playoffs i mean he looked great and honestly he looks just as he looks just as good right now ota's uh training camp he is quick he is nimble and he's still burning people left and right. Uh, obviously, it's just practice, but that's what Kelsey does. So I am going to go um, the over on nine and a half. I mean, he did 11 in 2020, nine in 2021, 12 in 2022, five last year, but I, I'm still going to hit hit the over. I, I mean, he somehow <laughs> still gets lost when he's double teamed. Like teams just forget about him. He finds the soft spot and you've got now without getting too long-winded, you've now got Hollywood to worry about, Worthy. You've got Pacheco, who I think is going to step up his receiving game. I think you're going to have an issue, and Kelsey's going to take advantage of that. I, I couldn't agree Rice more. And I, yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think the the point of of having Marquise and and Xavier be able to stretch the defense vertically with not just one, but but two guys, and then have a, a literal Hall of Fame tight end play underneath is it, it's going to be extremely tough to defend the Chiefs offense no matter how you slice it. And then also having a really hard nosed running back in Isaiah Pacheco just ground and pound along with a good offensive line. It's going to be it's going to be an incredibly tough offense to stop. Now, the next question is I well, we'll just ask it over under 11 and a half wins for the Chiefs this year. Well, I'm hitting the over on that. Um, Mahomes is always won in the Mahomes era rather the Chiefs have always won either 12 or 14 games last year they won 11 and two or three of those games they probably should have won if it wasn't for a Kadarius Tony pick six or I mean you could argue maybe they win um I think it was a was at the Packers game where there was a missed PI on MVS at the end of the game there you could have argued maybe he, that could he have dropped the one w. against the Eagles yeah he dro well he also dropped the one against the oh, Eagles. he dropped the one against the right. Eagles too so you could argue two more wins there and I'm not a guy that's like blames the refs or anything like that. They they took their L's like they should have, but there were there were legitimately very close games that they they probably should have had 12, 13 wins last year too, and that was a down year offensively for them. So I'm going I'm going like I feel pretty good about 13, 13, 14 wins. I feel pretty good. So the Chiefs have well they've, they've won three Super Bowls in five years. Will they get back to the Super Bowl this year? Actually, yeah, screw that. Will, will, will they make it a three-peat? Will be the first team, I was going to say, will they get to the Super Bowl? Will they three-peat? I really hope so, but I know how hard it is to get there. Um, they say it all the time. Like, it is extremely hard to get back to the Super Bowl. I mean, even just looking at the Chiefs' playoff run last year, they they were close games. They, they're not easy. Even the Super Bowl wins were not close games. They were not easy. Eagles win, close, not easy. 49ers close not easy so I hope so I am confident that they make it back I think there's a really good chance they can make it back based on what we're seeing preseason like we do have to account for some things of like please Chiefs stay healthy and some other things like that but I'm confident they get there and hopeful that they they're able to get three in a row it's never been done for a reason because it is really freaking hard 
Yeah, no doubt. And they, for what it's worth, uh, the Chiefs versus the Lions is is my pick right now. That's who I think it's going to be. I think Kansas City would come out on top, and I think that would be like the past few Super Bowls, and I think it would be one hell of a game. They're going to hate us so much. I mean, <laughs> if the Lions make it, if it is Chiefs-Lions, I think right. the Lions have never been, right? They've never been to a big game. No, so sir. They, they've never won a big game. Everyone's going to be rooting for Dan Campbell and company, dude. I mean, Chiefs are going to be so hated. As long, like, honestly, for me, as long as it's not Chiefs and 49ers, I don't mind beating them again. Like, that would be fun. But everybody else would be so pissed if uh, if that is the, if that is the matchup once again, three in a row. Yeah, or absolutely. Not three in a row, but three times, sorry, three times in the Mahomes era. No, and that would be, that'd be four and four and six, and that would be, uh, it'd be insane, to say the least. But uh, Cole, I appreciate you joining, appreciate you coming on, and uh, plug, plug the channel. Plug anything else you're working on, Cole. Yeah, one thing I do want to plug that I think is being slept on that I forgot to mention a bit ago, Rasheed Rice has reportedly been the best receiver at training camp, but because he's working a lot in the middle of the field, he's not making the highlight reels. If we want to talk about somebody that I think people need to keep an eye on, I think it is Rasheed Rice in year two out of probably everybody on the offense. I, I kind of overlooked it earlier, but I was just thinking about it. He's been the best receiver at camp, and then when you've got the – the threat of uh, Worthy and Hollywood and then obviously Kelsey. I think Rice is going to absolutely feast and uh, the suspension's probably not happening until next year. So I do want to say, watch out for Rice. He'd probably be a good person to have on your fantasy team as well. Um, so I wanted, to, I wanted to throw that in there as far as what I'm working on. Just Chiefs content, man, every single day as, as much as I can. And then I did start a new channel, Cole Breaks the Huddle. It's a similar format to my 10 to 15 minute Chiefs shows where it's concise just going subject to subject i'm doing that for the nfl now we've dropped uh probably five or six videos just covering the biggest news of the day we drop it that evening so now i'm trying to do two long form videos a day and uh try not to drown as the season <laughs> starts but but it's been a lot of fun i feel that well appreciate you joining cole and uh best of luck to your chiefs this year <laughs> thank you bro appreciate your yep. time of course you and, too uh, we'll, we'll chat soon that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please like and subscribe as it helps the channel tremendously, and comment how far you think the Chiefs are going to go this year. If you like this, please check out the Football Analysis Podcast. The link is in the description, and I will see you next time. Love you guys.